Hello my friends, it's the 9th of February 2016. Mr Max Bliss in the southwest of France. Now, I hope that all the things I can see in the sky with my naked eye are coming out. Because it's just absolutely incredible what I'm watching here. We're seeing all these ice crystals falling out of these clouds. Some of these clouds have apparently just appeared from nowhere. Especially like, it's clouds like this sort of white one here. I've been taking photographs of it. It was a very brilliant white, very distinct shape and it's all spreading out and uh, it's very, very strange. It's almost like we're seeing uh, cloud seeding. We're seeing these crystals falling and spreading and shaping, but one of the most remarkable things, I'm not sure if it will come out, is all these, in my mind, obvious frequency effects. The use of electromagnetic frequency, most likely, to interact with the particles in the atmosphere, or purely, maybe it's uh, microwaving the moisture content that's in the atmosphere. It's altering the atmosphere. There's no question about that anyway. Something is happening right now. I don't believe this is natural. I don't believe these are the types of clouds and this formations that we've been witnessing now have been happening all our lives. It's absolutely incredible. It's like, uh, I mean, I've been reading so much about weather and climate modification development, research and development through the years. I mean, this to me should be linked with um, harp and many other different types of antennas that send energy up into the atmosphere, use the energy that's already in the atmosphere. They've been learning how to modify our atmosphere for decades now, decades. And would uh, the, the contrails that are, are, are formed through aviation flying, we know that they, there are patents to deliberately create contrails. And we know that from uh, the document uh, Owning the Weather 2025, Using the Weather as a Force Multiplier, uh, multiplier from the US Air Force, a symposium on what they would like to do from 1997. Well... They talk about the ability to create contrails. Well, interestingly, I was reading a, uh, a document about the solar power satellite system they were thinking of doing from the 60s, 70s. And I was interested in the element of uh, a particular document I was reading about this, about weather modification. And what they would do would be to microwave energy back to Earth. But they could do it to a region in the atmosphere, but it was essential moisture was there. That was what it said about weather modification using microwave beams. There must be moisture present. Well, it's occurred to me that uh, the other, we know that these, look, there's all short dissipating trails now. Earlier on, I could see planes of short dissipating trails, but I would find randomly persistent contrails. Now, I've said before, and I have read from old patents from the 50s about weather modification using contrails, that contrails have different electrical and thermal dynamic properties. Well, we also know that that's a whole load of moisture there. And we also know that sometimes they connect and they give us the appearance of an antenna in the sky, like a grid system. Now, is it not feasible that this, uh, these contrails that form these grids or leave different particles in the atmosphere that, for, that are connections, sometimes they're invisible. Is it not feasible that these are the target zones for the use of, with harp? That these would be the areas filled with moisture? I mean, isn't it amazing how all these clouds have just changed whilst I've been talking? Flipping egg. All that seeding I was talking about earlier on. All these clouds dropping down and all this moisture appearing. Well, apparently it's moisture. Apparently it's ice crystals. But isn't it amazing that uh, we see sudden changes in the atmosphere? 
visible changes. They can just happen sometimes in a matter of seconds, let alone minutes. And so you're back to General Electric in uh, 1947, the start of Project Cirrus. General Electric happened to be the world's largest supplier of commercial jet engines. So back in 47, they were engaged in weather modification programs that basically started off the modern era of weather modification development. And these people, or this corporation, are obviously in bed with the military industrial complex, are a part of the military industrial complex. They've got a very, very historical uh, interest in weather modification. So could planes be deploying materials into the atmosphere, whether it's nanoparticles, nanofilms, or whether it's just a, a, an extra an area where moisture can be collected, or even, think about this, the huge amount of water vapour that is now in parts of the atmosphere where it shouldn't be. It's been understood that in, in 1965, a guy called Manaby did some calculations for, um, for a report, and this report was used in a book called Weather and Climate Modification. Problems and Prospects, Volume 2, so 1966. And in there he said that 400 planes flying four times a day over a 10-year span would put enough water vapour into the upper atmosphere. It would cause a surface warming of 1.6 degrees centigrade, which, by the way, that might happen regionally. But how much is the global warming that we've actually had since the end of the Little Ice Age? Well, global records have been, uh, been taken since 1880. So from 1880 to 2012, the IPCC say we've had a global warming of 0 0.85 centigrade. Not even one degree since the Little Ice Age have we warmed. But they've got the world in a, in a state of hysteria, if you believe the climate change, anthropogenic global warming nightmare. The dire global meltdown. We haven't even warmed one degree since the Little Ice Age yet. Because pre-industrial times is the Little Ice Age. They deliberately don't call it the Little Ice Age, because everyone would immediately say, isn't it natural to have some warming? The Thames doesn't still freeze over solid. They don't have frost fairs on the Thames anymore. So since this period, we have a warming of 0.85 centigrade. And they've got everyone terrified. But we, I mean, let's face it, we've always had extreme weathers, but we are getting more droughts more floods and these are being hyped up in the media massively hyped up and then you've got politicians like uh, Fab uh, Laurent Fabius the French foreign minister stating a couple of years ago almost that in 500 days we would have climate chaos and this coincides now with uh, the COP21 thing that just happened in December 2015 where they've got all the nations blackmailed, bribed or coerced, uh, coerced into agreeing to a climate change agreement where they're going to start tiptoeing in new changes all the time. Carbon taxes, the first global taxes, car uh, the first global tax will be carbon tax cap and trade schemes, all kinds of new measures brought in to address this terrible problem of climate change. Yet we haven't even warmed one degree since the Little Ice Age. That's an inconvenient truth, isn't it? We have not warmed one degree. Globally. Amazing, isn't it? How the sky has changed since I've been talking. Almost 10 minutes now, and the sky looks completely different. Amazing, isn't it? 
is so frustrating. The more and more I read about climate and weather modification technology, the military interest, the fact that basically the, the whole emphasis of um, experimentation and development, research and development in the polar basin, like the Polex projects of the 70s, the deliberate investigation is about deliberately melting the polar region. Why? Because vast tracts of Russia and Alaska and North America and Canada and Scandinavia, they would like to be less cold. They want global warming and they want access through the shipping routes of the polar basin and they want access to all the resources they would like to get. I don't care about the consequences. Yes, they're working towards it. It's not working very efficiently because the planet is a self-regulating system. You've got an El Nino, El Nino this year. We'll get a La Nina next year. We'll compensate. The planet compensates. It's warm one year. It'll be cold the next year. That's the planet bounces back. That's the way it works. But it has cycles. It has natural variability. And we are just entering a warmer period following the Little Ice Age on the scale of things as far as the planet is concerned. But what we have got is a military industrial complex linked together with the corporate system and the banking system that is a global hegemony. They have control over all the things that matter. They don't have complete control though, that's why they need the climate change scare. They're going to use the United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable Development, and, and all the other sub-programs to get total control of all resources and get the compliance, the capitulation, the acquiescence of all the people around the world. We're talking about the beginning of a one world government, a new world order, where you will not be able to vote out a government because the government is just there for show. It's, it answers to a one world government system through the framework of the United Nations and the banks that prop them up, the IMF and the World Bank and all these different organizations that have been developed to create a one world government through international interdependency. I mean, where's all the world debt coming from? And who are all the nations of the world in debt to? I'd say that everyone in the world needs to default their debt to whoever it is. Start again, clean the slate. Because debt slavery isn't helping. It means that all our utilities and all our resources have been privatized so the bankers can charge like three times more than what it was when it was owned by nations. Britain being a perfect example of how the governments have sold out their people to the private to the bankers so that now things like water and electricity which used to be owned by uh, the UK government it was nationalized now the cost of those things are triple what they used to be people are, are living in poverty and austerity because our governments sold out their people and of course they always have done, because the governments were never there for the people. And the governments are working on global weather and climate modification technology. It's essential for them so that they can con the masses and they can introduce legislation that people won't oppose. And once they get it at a certain level, there's nothing you can do about it anyway, apart from revolution. And I'm not encouraging violent revolution. The revolution that's going to work is the one that we can be proud of. And that's by waking everyone up and the majority demanding change peacefully. Overwhelm this tiny 0.1% that is dominating the planet with their crimes against the planet, against humanity, against nature. It's time to wake up and do as much research as you can and wake as many people up because we need everyone awake. There's so much information out there that should wow everyone if they're not suffering with cognitive dissonance. Believe it or not, people will fight to stay in their state of servitude because it feels safe. <laughs> even though the news gets tighter and tighter and their freedoms disappear, you can't even travel or have being sexually molested these days. 
That's by security checking you to see if you've got a bomb. Yeah, airport security in the UK have never, ever found any explosives. It's all bullshit to condition you to being treated like an animal. That's all it is. It's time to wake up, my friends, and wake everyone up you can. Take care, and bye for now.